Yeah, hi there, how you doing? Wanted to go over my uh, swirl tank. Uh, so I was going through my garage. I have another video showing my garage hoard. And I came across this swirl tank that I made. Made this for a race car that I had in 2000. And, um, well, the race car I built in 1998. Ran it for a few years. And I worked at a place where the guy did a lot of road racing. Uh, mine was a little dirt track, but he did a lot of road racing. And he used these uh, swirl tanks. So I built a swirl tank and put it on my car. And I looked on the internet the other day. And I saw on YouTube there was no real explanation of what a swirl tank does. Now, if you want to read a lot, there's very wordy explanations of what they do. But I just want to tell you briefly what they do. So, the swirl tank would be connected in your uh, upper or return radiator hose to your radiator. So, it would come in here, water from the engine comes in here, and then it's connected at a tangent to the tank. It'll come in here, and it will rotate. And theoretically, you'll get a vortex in here. Your vent or your radiator cap will be here, okay? And then your outlet to your radiator will be here. And in my case, again, I made this at a tangent. You can have the outlet directly on the bottom, but again, that could get into the vortex. It can get into the, the gas or air pocket in the center. Uh, this is just where I had it mounted on a bar in the, in the car. Um, what I saw online was a picture of like a Lotus... A lot of European cars had it. Now, this device is mainly used in a performance car. Uh, your daily driver, you wouldn't need it. Uh, basically, it's in a car where the amount of water you carry is minimized. Your radiator size is min Everything is min minimized for performance. So there would be times under hard acceleration, high performance, where you may get vapor pockets in your engine from... from uh, you know, extreme racing conditions. Now, those vapor pockets uh, described in the literature can occur at a position in your engine where there might be some casting flash. Uh, say you have cast iron heads where it's not smooth on the inside and you would have a place that you can create that, uh, that bubble would form. And there's a lot of technology and engineering about the formation of bubbles and how they, f they, they form and how what they need to form. Uh, of course, your engine will be under pressure by your radiator cap. Now, granted, you could have air pockets in there that you didn't get out when you filled it with coolant. Uh, so what would happen is your coolant will expand. You would probably start out with this full, and as the coolant expands, it would push water out. Now, it would only push it out to a certain extent. Then this whole tank could end up filled with vapor, but it would be a vortex. So all the vapor stays in here, or the air, and only water comes out of here. Now, ideally, you would have a separate tank like this as a surge tank, and you would have this tank to separate that fluid or the, the vapor out, and you would just have a port going from here, and you'd have a whole separate tank as a surge tank with no radiator connections. But I just wanted to take a couple minutes and explain how that worked. So, on your daily driver, no, you don't need it. But if you're if you're doing road, um, if you're doing uh, rallying, if you're doing uh, auto crossing, drifting, uh, anything drag racing, where you might have that moment where you need that uh, that high intensity run, followed by potentially a cool down run, because uh, the the vapor can actually turn back to liquid and stay in your system. But again, this would be the place the vapor would be. It would not go into your radiator. The radiator would remain full of water, providing the best heat transfer. Uh, if you go to the old cars like the old Chevys where the, the, the radiator cap is on top of the radiator, and essentially the top portion of the radiator is at some point in time uh, full of vapor. Modern cars are not like that. They actually have a separate, they have a separate uh, tank, separate surge tank. But, um, but yeah, so that, that, this is what a swirl pot is. 
swirl pot, a swirl tank, a vortex chamber. So any questions, comment below and I'll answer them. Thanks.